is a part of supernatural release. That God will release all the inheritance that He has promised me. That's both in the name of Jesus Christ. I am a kingdom child. I am a kingdom child. And your child will Almighty God. But as bless me this month. Bless the works of my hands. Bless my health. Bless my home. Bless my family. Bless my job. I'm 
blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the life fall for us. He's going to bless and bless us throughout the week. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we call upon you. We worship you, our Father. We worship you. Because even this month, you are sending helpers of destiny to our lives. So you send us our helpers of destiny for each day and for each week. Throughout this day, throughout this week, throughout this month, throughout this year, the right man, the right woman, the right person in our life. Father, let them look for us. Let them favor us. Let them bless us. They will not relent in the name of Jesus Christ. And we shall be a blessing to others. But I bless us mightily that will become a blessing. Bless us mightily that will become a blessing to our generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, God of Father. We thank you, God of Son. And we thank you, God of Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
thanking God Hallelujah. that we are the worth. Hallelujah. We were worth it. Hallelujah, Jesus. You thought of us when you died on the cross. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we honor you, Jesus. Because you didn't have to do it, but you did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can we just worship a second? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The prophet, he had to go forth. He had to die. He had to die. Oh, God, but we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
God, you save me. I will heal me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus.
yes you have this morning. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for all of you. Praise God. And we want to thank you. Those who are joining us online, we thank God for you. And if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, we want you to do one important thing. Share, 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 share the link. Amen. God has a word for somebody. Praise God. And you might just be the bridge to that person's miracle today by sharing the link with that person. All right. Send the link to all your, you know, all your followers on, on Facebook and all of that. Let them join in this service. God is going to bless someone today in Jesus' name. You're going to experience the resurrection power in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen. All right. While you're still standing, Matthew 6, 33. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, everybody. Let's recite those two passages together. Let's go. For which cause we faint now, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Matthew 6, 33. So above all, constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Lift your right hand and say with me, I'm a God chaser, I'm a change maker, I'm a disciple builder, I practice the revival lifestyle, and I enforce my world with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. So help me God. Amen. I'm a God chaser, living in revival, touching the world with the love. morning. Yeah. It's okay to be excited in his house. Yeah. Glory to God. For death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. For death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you something funny. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So this man converted from uh, Islam to Christianity. Okay. And someone asked him, so why did you why did you get born again? Why did you leave Islam? Um, why did you become a Christian? He said, so it's, it's, it's like this. If you were going on a road and suddenly the road divides into two or breaks into two, and right there on the fork, you meet two men. Hmm. One dead and one alive. Which one would you ask the way to go? <laughs> I, I got it. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Which one would you ask? The one who is alive. The one who is alive. Yes, sir. And that's Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. Mohammed is dead and forgotten. Yes, sir. Are you still there? But Jesus is alive. Amen. An empty grave is there to prove that he is alive. Hallelujah. 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 Celebrate. Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate. Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate. Jesus, celebrate. to the book of Matthew chapter 28 we're going to read from verse 1 to 6 together Matthew 28 from verse 1 to 6 I want to thank God for all of you who joined us on Friday and yesterday online we had an incredible program on the conference yeah. hall and on Zoom and, and, and it was such an incredible blessing yeah. praise God we want to thank God for what he did and today we're going to bring the program to an end. Now I'm going to bring your word from God that will bless you. Amen. I need you to open your heart. I need you to get ready Amen. for a word right. from God. Amen. You know, one of the amazing things that God did yesterday was a word of knowledge came with the name of a person who is in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. wow. But the sister is here in the United States. And... The Lord said that there was a curse of death in their family and nobody, okay, lives above 50. They go in their 50s, they pass. My goodness. And we prayed for this lady and then she began to testify. Her brother is a pastor. He's sick. He's 52. Wow. She lost her older sister. She lost another sister. All of them in their 50s. She too had a battle with sickness. Her child, her first son, at 10, I think about 8 or so, he was diagnosed with diabetes. My God. Mm -hmm. So it's like death stalking everyone in the family. But God. But God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The resurrection power is about to make a difference in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So today I'm going to be talking to you about supernatural Christianity. Yeah. Supernatural Christianity. Yeah. All right, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. We're going to read from verse 1 to 6 together. Let's go. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here. Come on, everybody shout it. For he is risen. And he said, come see the place 
where the Lord lay. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We lack words to describe your beauty, your loveliness, your majesty, your sovereignty, your authority. We're just in awe of you. Today, let your resurrection power be manifested in our midst. Amen. Touch everyone who is in this place and touch everyone who is watching, oh God. Amen. God, let there be a deposit of your anointing on the video Amen. so that everybody who watches it at any time, they will experience the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. Thank you for healings, miracles. Thank you for encouragement. Thank you for wisdom that will come through the ministry of your word. Thank you. Chains are going to be broken. Thank you. Lights are going to be reset. Thank you, God. Mindsets are going to be reprogrammed as your word goes forth. I just yield myself to your spirit of God. Acknowledging that I can of my own self do nothing. But through your help, I can minister effectively to your people today. And that's my desire. That's my prayer. Have your way, God, in Jesus' name. Let someone who is expecting great things from the Lord today say, Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Glory to God. Glory to God. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is the crowning, or, or, or you, you can call it the crowning event of Christianity. The crown of of Christianity. Yes, sir. Yes. Without the resurrection, there will be no Christianity. Amen. Come on. This morning, we're all here today to celebrate the one who rose from the dead. And the passage that we have before us talks about how the women, thank God for courageous women, thank how they went to the, 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 the grave. Their determination was to um, Anoint the body with, with spices or embalm the body. Yes, sir. But then they were shocked to discover that the grave was empty. Yes. Because the Lord had risen. Amen. Yes, yes. You might want to ask this question. So, what did the resurrection accomplish? What did the resurrection of the Lord Jesus accomplish? Was it a mere historical event? Is it just a tradition of the church? What did it really accomplish? Uh -huh. Can I talk to you this morning? Right. So first of all, the resurrection proved that Jesus Christ is God. Yes. Yeah. yes, sir. The resurrection was the demonstration of his deity. Yes. The crowning proof that Jesus is God. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still there? That's number one. Number two, the resurrection provided the legal basis for our justification. You see, he died for our forgiveness from sin. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord. But if he had only died, that means that our sins would have been forgiven. But it would have meant that we would not be legally free. Mm. Because even after your sins have been forgiven, you need to be justified, declared legally free, and made righteous. So he rose from the dead to declare us legally free from any obligation to Satan. He rose from the dead for our justification. The word justification, you can just say, it means just as if I had never sinned. Mm -hmm. That's, right. Mm -hmm. That's right. He rose from the dead so that we can have his righteousness and so that we can live his life. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He rose from the dead so we can become regenerated. Mm -hmm. Because apart from our sins being forgiven, we needed... Uh, to become new in order to live a different life altogether yes. from the life that we had lived previously. Oh, so Lord. Jesus had to rise from the dead. Praise the Lord. Number three, the resurrection was the defeat of man's greatest enemies. Mm -hmm. What are those enemies? Sin, Satan, and death. The greatest enemies of man 
became defeated. The Bible says, having spoiled or disarmed the principalities and powers, he made an open shore of them, triumphing over them in it. Aren't you glad that Satan has been defeated? Aren't you glad that he has no more power over you? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Satan belongs under your feet because you have been raised up and you have been made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places because of the resurrection. Because of the resurrection, you have victory over sickness. Because of the resurrection, you have victory over fear. Because of the resurrection, you have victory over depression. Because of the resurrection, you can live a life of victory. Because of the resurrection, you are no more a victim. You are more than a conqueror today. Glory to God. Can I talk to you today? What did the resurrection accomplish? Here's number four. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the singular most significant event that has changed the history of mankind. The resurrection changed the history of mankind. Look at how they acknowledge this. B.C. before Christ. A.D. after the resurrection. Yes. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about time. Is tied to him. His resurrection. Changed the history. Of mankind. The resurrection changed everything. Can I tell you some things. That the resurrection changed. Yes, sir. Are you ready for this. Yes, sir. Come on now. Hallelujah. Because of the resurrection. The cross. The cross became no more a symbol of tragedy. My God. But it became a symbol of triumph. Hallelujah. So when we look at it, the empty cross today, we do not sorrow. That's all right. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Because Jesus is no longer on that cross. Hallelujah. So the cross is no longer a symbol of tragedy. It is a symbol of triumph. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Are you sure you are still here? Yes, Glory to God. Did you know that the resurrection transformed Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. You see, he went to the cross yes, sir. as the last Adam. That means the end of the old creation. Glory. But he rose from the dead as the second Adam, mm -hmm. which means he is the beginning of a new creation. Glory. Hallelujah. He went to the cross a living soul. When he rose from the dead, he became a life-giving spirit. What does that mean, a life-giving spirit? Meaning that he can duplicate his life in many. You see, when he was physically present on the earth, he could only do miracles where he was. But now that he has risen from the dead and he has become a life-giving spirit, he can give his life to many and they can do the same works that he did. The works that I do shall you do also. Yes. And greater works shall you do because yes. I go to my Father. Oh, oh, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Do you want to know more? A, a, a few more things that the, the resurrection changed? Yes, sir. Glory to God. You see, the resurrection transformed the disciples from a, a group of fearful men to a group of fearless men. Yeah. When Jesus was arrested, they were all in hiding. They all fled. In fact, right in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the militia or the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, all of his disciples fled. They were terrified. And when he was crucified... They became hopeless because they thought that that was the end of his story. You can imagine being with a man for three and a half years and he gave them great hope. He told them he was coming to establish a kingdom. They saw the miracles that he did. Mm -hmm. They ate of the loaves that he multiplied. Mm -hmm. They saw how he walked on water. They saw how he raised the dead. And now the story was coming to an end just when they thought it had just it had started. 
hopelessness, Three. despair, discouragement. You might even say depression. Right. But after that, Jesus rose from the dead. Uh -huh. This group of men who were in hiding, they turned the world upside down. Yes. Yeah. Did you know that this group of men took the gospel of the Lord Jesus all over the world and Rome, the very kingdom, the very ruling authority that crucified Jesus eventually became a Christian nation. Hallelujah. Because of the power of the resurrection. Oh, bless yeah. Hallelujah. Did you know the resurrection brought an end to the dispensation of the law? Yeah. Yes, sir. Because of the resurrection, we are now in a new dispensation called the dispensation of grace. Yes, yeah. Did you know that the resurrection broke the yoke of slavery from over you and I? Hallelujah. There was a yoke on our necks. Uh -huh. We were to obey 613 commandments. Huh. I mean, you will break so many because you wouldn't even know which one you are breaking. <laughs> That's correct. Tell me about it. <laughs> are you still here? Yes, sir. Go ahead. When Jesus rose from the dead, uh -huh. God, thank you. that old covenant became obsolete. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Hallelujah. And we came into a new dispensation, yeah. the dispensation of grace. Yeah. Oh, yes. Even the attitude, the work of the Holy Spirit, the way the Holy Spirit related with mankind, with men, changed after the resurrection. Before the resurrection, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit will come upon men and women and will use them. Yes, sir. But after the resurrection, the Holy Spirit began to dwell in men yeah, and in women. Praise there was a change. You see, the resurrection changed everything. Oh, are you still here? Are you still here? Are you still here? Glory to God. The resurrection changed everything. You see, before the resurrection, to have access to the Father, you had to come to the sacrificial system of the Old Testament. But after Jesus rose from the dead, and became the mediator between God and man. You and I didn't need a go between to come to the Father. Wow. Jesus had opened the way. Yeah. When we come in His name, we have unhindered access to the Father. Hallelujah! Whoa. That's what the resurrection did for us. Praise the Lord. resurrection changed everything. Did you know that before the resurrection, if men went before God, they trembled. When the voice of God came to the people of Israel, they trembled so much that they said, we don't want to hear his voice. Moses, you go hear his voice for us because we are terrified. But after Jesus rose from the dead, man could approach the throne of God without fear. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find the grace to help us in our time of need. So because of the resurrection, we can go to the Father without fear, without condemnation, without shame, and without inferiority. We can call him Abba Father. Amen. On the cross, he turned his back on his son. When did that happen? The moment the sin of all mankind, past, present, and future, was placed on Jesus. The father, being too big to behold iniquity, he turned his back to his son. That very moment, Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. In other words, my God, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. For the first time, Jesus called his father, he called him God. Yes, sir. Before now, he called him my father. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. So there was a separation between the father and his son. God turned his back on Jesus so that he would never have to turn his back on you. Amen. You see, because of the resurrection, God is no longer angry with you. Rather, the Bible says this in the book of Proverbs. It says that the light of the king's countenance is life and his favor is as clouds of the latter rain. What that means is when the king looks at you and smiles, his favor flows in your direction. Yeah. Hear me? God is all smiles towards you today. Yeah. When God looks at you, he smiles. Yeah. 
Amen. He will never turn his back on you. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the resurrection. Are you still here? I said, thank you, Lord, for the resurrection. Did you know that the resurrection broke all social barriers? The Bible says, this is in the book of Galatians, um, chapter 3 and verse number 28. It says, now there is no more Jew nor Greek. What's that? Racial barriers. There is neither bond nor free. What's that? Social barriers or economic barriers. Yeah. There is neither male nor female. What's that? Gender barrier. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. The resurrection broke all barriers and brought all men to the same level. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So those of you who say, oh, women are not supposed to preach. You don't know what the resurrection accomplished. It broke all barriers. All barriers. All barriers. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. God doesn't recognize you because you're rich. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't look down on you because you were poor. All of us are equally accepted in his presence. The resurrection made it so. Before the resurrection, the Jews thought that their Lord were entitled to the worship of Jehovah. But the resurrection changed all that. Because of the resurrection, the Gentiles, all of us who are not Jews by, by blood, have become accepted and adopted into the family of God. Somebody say, thank God for the resurrection. Thank God for the resurrection. I can't hear you say, thank God for the resurrection. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can I tell you a few more things that the resurrection accomplished? Glory to God. The resurrection birthed a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things or everything has become new. So because of the resurrection, there's a, a new species of mankind on the face of the earth today carrying a different kind of life. It's called Zoe, the life of God. Thank you, Lord. That's what you have. Because you have this Zoe in you, you will live with God eternally. Every other human who doesn't have this Zoe in them, they have what is called Suke, which is the ordinary life. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Are you here? A new creation was birthed because of the resurrection. God, I pray. Hallelujah. A new species of mankind. A new, a new species of mankind that can no longer be dominated by sin or Satan or death. Thank you, Jesus. A new species of mankind. Glory. Now they are champions of the face of the earth. Glory. More than conquerors. They operate in the class of Christ. They are to be his representatives on the earth. And a new creation. Are you still here? The resurrection also brought into being a body that never existed before. That body is known as the church. There was no church before the resurrection. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of the resurrection, the church was born. Watch this. When God talked about the people of Israel, he called them his servants. But when Jesus refers to the church, he says that the church is his body. He is the head and the church is his body. That is incredible. If you understand what that means, my goodness, my goodness, you will rule on earth. Christ is the head. His church is his body. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means, it, that, that is a metaphor to describe our oneness with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. sir. Hallelujah. So we are not separate from him. We are part of him. Thank you, Jesus. And we are here to rule on his behalf. So the church is not just a, it's not a building. The church is not a gathering of people who come to sing songs and hear a message on Sunday. 
The church is a living organism representing Christ and manifesting his authority in the earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the church. And the church is a phenomenon because when the rapture takes place, the church will be gone. So there's nothing like the church before it was born. And there will be nothing like the church after it is taken away. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Are you looking forward to the day we will be taken away? Yeah. That day is called the day of the rapture. Suddenly there will be a shout from heaven hallelujah. and the voice of the trumpet. And the Bible says those who have already passed and slept in Christ, they will be raised up. And we who are alive, we will join up with them to meet the Lord in the air. The church will be taken away from the earth and the church will not suffer the wrath to come. Hallelujah. The tribulation, the punishment that is to come upon the world during the seven years of the tribulation. Are you still here? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Number six. The resurrection gave man power to live like Christ. Power to live like Christ. Remember I said when Jesus went to the cross, he went as a living soul. But when he rose from the dead, he became a life-giving spirit. Meaning he can replicate his life in many. That's why Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nonetheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul recognized that Christ was alive in him, living his life. That is the life of Christ through him. That is Christianity. See, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a way of life. Christianity is Christ living yes. his life through you and I. Yes. That could not have been possible without the resurrection. Are you listening to me? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The resurrection gave you and I authority to live a life of victory, a life of dominion here on earth. But here's the seventh one. What the resurrection accomplished. Listen up everybody. The resurrection gave birth to a new way of life. A new way of life. A supernatural lifestyle. Ha! Huh? A supernatural lifestyle called Christianity. <laughs> Glory to God. You see, Christianity is founded upon the supernatural. You see, before the resurrection, there was nothing called Christianity. Jesus. But there was something called Judaism. That's right. That's right. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Now, Christianity is different from Judaism. Much different. Are you there? Christianity is not founded on any tradition. Hmm. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Christianity is not built on any formality or any tradition or even any history. It is like something that never existed before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is different from Judaism. A brand new way of life. A supernatural lifestyle. The resurrection gave birth to that. So Christianity is founded on the supernatural. Take away the supernatural and there's no Christianity. What you have is a religion. This is why we say Christianity is not a religion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let me portray that fact to you. Let me show you when we go back to the story in Matthew chapter 20. Uh, Matthew chapter 28 where we read. If we look at the events. All of the events that occurred from the time that Jesus was arrested in the garden of Gethsemane to when he rose from the dead. Watch this everybody. Watch this everybody. Watch this everybody. You're going to notice that the resurrection, when I say the resurrection, remember, I'm talking about events that began where? In the garden of Gethsemane where he was arrested. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. If you go from there and you look at everything that happened to when he was resurrected, you're going to see 10 miracles. 
10 miracles. Because I want to show you that Christianity is founded on the supernatural. It is not a religion. It is a supernatural lifestyle. That's the lifestyle that you are called to leave. You are not called to leave a religion. You are not called to practice a dogma. You are not called to follow some tenets or rules. You are called to leave a supernatural lifestyle. Amen. Can I tell you those miracles? Are you ready to go with me? Yes, Praise God. So in the garden of Gethsemane, remember that Jesus prayed there until he began to sweat blood. And then Judas came in, accompanied by some of the religious leaders and by a huge army, possibly a battalion of Roman soldiers or militia men. They came into the garden. And Judas had told them, the man that I kiss, yeah. oh my God, what a kiss of betrayal. Mm -hmm. The man that I kiss, that is the one that you are to arrest. Because possibly the Roman soldiers did not know Jesus in person. Good so they Lord. needed him to be identified. So Judas kissed him. And the Roman soldiers came to him and then he asked them, he said, whom are you looking for? Who are you looking for? They said, we're looking for Jesus. He said, I am. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, you can read that on your own in John chapter 18 and verse number 6. He said, I am. The moment he said, I am. Do you know what happened? The entire battalion of soldiers fell to the ground. Now, a battalion in the Roman army is made up of so about three between three hundred to six hundred soldiers. Jesus. Now you can imagine the the the, the government and the people are uh, the, the they, they felt that Jesus was such a security risk that they had to come with an entire battalion to arrest him. <laughs> between three hundred to six hundred soldiers. Yeah. When he said, "I am," John translates it, "I am He," but in the Greek it is "I am." Ooh, hallelujah. When he said it, a force or a supernatural power, this same power that we're talking about came and swept all of them off their feet and they fell to the ground. <laughs> demonstrating that he is God. He is God. That he was actually giving himself up to be arrested. Mm -hmm. That's miracle number one. Everybody say number one. Number one. Right there in that garden, remember, that Peter, the impulsive one, took a sword and cut off the ear of one of the servants of the high priest who came with the soldiers to arrest Jesus. And Jesus said, no, this is not about fighting with swords. And he picked up the man's ear and put it back again. That's the second miracle. Aren't you surprised that with all these things, these soldiers didn't run away? <laughs> that would tell you they were motivated by demonic spirits. Oh, I, are you listening to what I'm saying? Because if I were among them and I saw these two miracles, help me out. <laughs> There's something about this man. Yeah. I don't want to be part of those who want to murder him. Mm -hmm. But they were demonically inspired to arrest him. Mm. And not even those two miracles could stop them. Mm. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Glory yes, sir. to God. Amen. And then the third miracle was that when Jesus was crucified, the Bible says that between the ninth hour and the twelfth hour, which means between 12 to 3 p.m., darkness covered yeah. everywhere. Right. That was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Darkness covered everywhere. In other words, God was demonstrated. Even creation was bearing witness to the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. But how had they do a humans? They were seeing all these signs, yet they would not believe. Ah, my, my. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if darkness were to cover the whole of the United States of America between 12 noon at 3 p.m. I mean, everybody be wondering what's going on. There'd be trouble everywhere. 
Yeah. That was miracle number three. Are you still there? Glory to God. And then when Jesus gave up his spirit, the Bible says that the veil that was in the temple, it tore from top to bottom. Yes, sir. What was that veil all about? That was the veil that separated the holy of holies from the holy place. Yes, sir. <coughs> <clears throat> the, tabernacle, the tabernacle has three parts the outer court and then the holy place and the holy of holies so there's a curtain that separates the holy of holies from the holy place you can't go in there only a priest can go in there the high priest once a year and he goes there trembling because he's going there to offer a blood for the sins of the people and you know when he will go in there they would have to tie a rope on his leg and he has to wear a robe that has pomegranates at the bottom. Those pomegranates were like bells. Mm -hmm. So that while he was ministering before the, the, the ark, everybody will hear the tingling of the bells. That meant that he was still alive. Mm -hmm. If they did not hear any sound, nobody could go in there to find out what had happened to him. They could only pull him out. Remember, he was there was a rope that was tied to his to one to one of his feet, so they would pull him out. Yes, sir. Nobody could go in there. <laughs> Are you listening to me? But now the veil of the temple tore from the top to the bottom. That's a miracle. Why? Because the height of the veil was about is estimated to be about sixty feet. If it tore from the top, it means that no human could have done it. It must be supernatural. And it is supernatural because the width of, the, of that curtain is about four inches. In fact, they say if you had two horses try to pull that curtain apart, they wouldn't be able to tear it. Are you listening to me? That's to tell you how thick it was. So for it to tear from top to bottom, that was supernatural. Yes. Meaning that God was breaking open the way into his presence. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Meaning that you and I can access the throne of the Father without fear. Glory. Because the way has been opened. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a miracle. Yeah. Everybody say that's a miracle. That's, that's, miracle. miracle. that's miracle number what now? Huh. How many of you are following? Yes. Glory to God. All right, here's miracle number five. The earth shook and the rocks split. That's miracle number what? Five. Number five. Number six, the graves opened. <laughs> Hallelujah. The graves opened and the dead came up. And the Bible tells us that many people saw their dead relations. Can you imagine seeing your... your <laughs> Your great grandfather knocking on your door. You are like, what's going on? He said, I don't know, but something happened, and I'm and I'm and I'm back, and I'm glad to be back. Somebody say miracles. Yes. The next one. That's number one now. Yes. Jesus gave up his own spirit. That was a miracle, because you see, usually death by crucifixion was a torturous death yes okay but it was also not a death that occurred quickly you could be on the cross for like 48 hours mm -hmm. and you would usually die of dehydration yeah so it was a slow and terrible and painful death okay but the amazing thing was that when they crucified the lord jesus Within a short time, he was already dead. Okay, so it was the Sabbath. And the Jews wouldn't want those bodies lying there on the Sabbath day. So they wanted to just complete everything and, and go away. Yes, sir. Okay, the next day was Sabbath. Now, when people ask questions and they are like, people are like, uh, was it really three days? He was crucified on Friday. He rose on Sunday morning. How could that be three days? Well, okay, so you need to travel to Israel with me this year. 
because we're going there from the first to the to the to the to the ninth of November, and then you understand their way of life over there. Okay, they follow the lunar calendar. That's correct. While we follow the solar calendar over here, the lunar calendar means that their day does not begin at sunrise. Mm -hmm. Their day begins at sunset of the previous day. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. So if you're in Israel, okay, when it's evening today, by 6 p.m., you actually have entered into Monday. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So the Passover, the Passover began on Thursday night. That is sunset on Thursday. That's when Passover began. Are you there? So when Jesus was crucified on Friday morning, it was already one day. That's correct. Praise God. And then Saturday, the next day. And remember, Sunday began when? Saturday evening. That's when Sunday began. So Sunday was more or less a full day. If you count that, three days. Amen. It's always important to understand the context of the Bible before you rush to make arguments. Yes, oh, how did he, how could he have been three days? He was crucified on Friday. He rose early on Sunday morning. How do you count that as three days? We'll find out the culture of the people of the Bible. Are you there? So here was the mystery. They wanted to make sure these people the three people that were crucified, Jesus and the two, two criminals, were dead. Okay? So that they could dispose of the bodies and, uh, you know, the Sabbath wow, was about to start that evening. So what did they do? They broke the legs and the hands of the two thieves to quicken their death. But then when they came to Jesus, they were shocked. They looked at him. They felt like, is he already dead? That's not surprising. That's not possible. You are supposed to stay at least 48 hours on the cross. So, in order to find out if he was actually dead, they pierced his side yes, and God. out came blood and water. Which means that his blood had congealed, meaning he was already dead. Mm -hmm. Also meaning that he died of a broken heart. Jesus. His heart was broken so that your own heart might be healed. Come on. You've been through abuse, you've been through trauma, you've That's been through right. stress. People have disappointed you, people have used you and dumped you. You're carrying with you pain. Some of you are carrying pain from childhood trauma. Jesus mm -hmm. you. took your pain. Hallelujah. He died of a broken heart so that your heart can be healed. And I speak over you today and I decree and declare healing for your broken heart. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that's a miracle. He gave up his life. That's a miracle. Glory to God. That's miracle number one. Thank you Lord Jesus. Here's miracle number nine. The Bible says the people who observed all of these things. The earthquakes. They observed the dead coming back to life. They observed the darkness covering the earth for about three hours. He said, they said, this must be the son of God. And many of them believed. So miracle number nine is the miracle of changed lives. Lives that were changed as a result of what they saw. Are you still here? Then we come to number 10. What's number 10? Before I tell you what number 10 is, let me tell you the significance of 10 in the Bible. 10 represents a complete testimony, a complete witness. In other words, by 10 witnesses, we know that the resurrection is, a, is truth. We know that the resurrection is real. We know that the resurrection is not a made up story. 10 witnesses, 10 witnesses, 10 witnesses. Means the story of the resurrection is complete. And God is amazing. So what is the tenth miracle? <laughs> Can I tell you the tenth miracle? Are you ready for the tenth miracle? God makes provision for you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. 
You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Are you sure you are here? Are you sure you are here? <laughs> Glory to God. No, we jumped one. How come you told me we've already got two? We jumped one. Number nine is the angel that rolled away the stone on Sunday morning and sat on it. <laughs> Praise God. Don't confuse the preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. That's the eighth one, actually. The ninth one is a testimony of changed lives. And then number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Are you ready for number 10? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Are you ready for number 10? Number 10 is the testimony. Of your own life. Yeah. That's number 10. You see, God made space for you mm -hmm. so that Hallelujah. the completion of the of the of the of the evidence of the resurrection will uh -huh. be the transformation in your own life. Woo! Will be the supernatural lifestyle that you live. You see, by living a supernatural lifestyle, you are proving to the world that the resurrection is real. You see, the world has read the story of the resurrection. In fact, I read a research that said in 2012, 70% of Americans believed that the resurrection is a true historical fact and that Jesus actually died and rose again. 70% of Americans. That was in 2012. I don't know what has happened since the pandemic. <laughs> you, know, you know, a lot has changed, right? That means a lot of people actually believe that it is a historical fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Are you there? Yes, but they want something beyond history. They want to see tangible proof today that the resurrection is real. So God made room for you. The Bible says these signs shall follow those that believe. What are those signs? The sign of a holy life. The sign of victory over sin. The sign of a life of dominion. The sign of a life of, 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 of holiness. The sign of healing. The sign of deliverance. The sign of wonders. When a believer lives the supernatural life, you become living evidence that the resurrection is real. Yes, oh, you didn't hear me. So hear me, beloved. The world is looking at you. They want to know, is the resurrection still real? Yeah. Is it still true? Yeah. They have heard some of them when they were when they were young and they were they may not be going to church today, but possibly in Sunday school, in children's church, they were taught stories about the resurrection. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any American who doesn't know anything about Easter bunny and Easter eggs and all of that. They all know about that. In fact, it is said that Americans attend church more at Easter than at any other time of the year. Wow, that's a fact. Are you listening to me? So they know about Easter, but they are waiting to see proof, proof, proof that Jesus is still alive. And you are the one holding that proof. Yeah. You are the one they are waiting for. They are waiting for you to live a supernatural life. Yeah. When you go to work and they insult you and you are calm, that's evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. I know you are right. Yes, sir. Because he is living in you. Yeah. See, they no longer need to go to Israel to see an empty grave to prove that Jesus is alive. They need to look at you, your character in the office, your calmness at home. Praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? Your peacefulness in the face of adversity. When they look at that, they know Jesus is alive. Yeah. Oh, you're not there. Yes, they look at your victory over sin. You are faced with temptation and you say no to sin. When they see that, they know that Jesus is still alive. They know that the resurrection is no longer a historical fact. They now know that the resurrection is a living reality. This is why Christianity is supernatural. You see, without you being part of the equation, part of the evidence, part of the proof of the resurrection, the story of the resurrection is incomplete. That's why God made space for you. Amen. That's why he left you to be the tenth evidence mm -hmm. of the resurrection. Lord, I pray. Can I ask you? Yes, sir. Is your life proof of the resurrection? Yes, sir. Is your life 
really proof of the resurrection? Is your life proof of the resurrection? My God. Can your neighbors tell that Jesus is still alive by your character? All your neighbors get confused because they hear you sing wonderful Christian songs. They hear you pray loud. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then, <laughs> when they step on you, they hear you curse. <laughs> they are like, something doesn't seem to be right here. Isn't this the woman who wouldn't let us sleep in this apartment complex? She's always praying at midnight. But my God, in the morning, when you greet us, you're like, mm. <laughs> Hi, Miss Rachel, how are you? Mm. <laughs> wow. Are you still the woman that prayed all, that prayed all night last night? Are you still the same woman? Is your life proof of the resurrection? Is your life proof of the resurrection? That's the question you got to answer today. Is your life proof of the resurrection? Now let me tell you two keys to becoming a living proof of the resurrection. This is what the world is waiting for. This is what will turn the world upside down. This is what will bring many sinners to Christ when they see you living out the resurrection on a daily basis. Glory to God. So how can you become a living proof of the resurrection? Two things. You see, under the old covenant, they were required to hear and obey. Life under the old covenant was based on two important requirements. Hear and obey. Under the new covenant, there are two important rules, or you call, we call them principles for living the supernatural life, the Christian life. Are you still there? Yes, sir. There are two. Everybody say two. Yes, Number one is belief. Yes, sir. Belief. You see, Christ has already accomplished everything that they need that, that needs to be accomplished. Your part is to believe. Your part is to believe what he has already accomplished. And then the next one is to rely. You cannot live the supernatural life by your own ability. You gotta rely on the Holy Spirit to live the life of Christ through you. The more you depend on him, the more you trust him, the more you rely on him, the more effectively he lives his life through you. Remember Paul said, it is not I that liveth, but Christ that lives within me, or that lives through me. This is supernatural Christianity. Christ living through you. So believe what he did on the cross. Believe what he accomplished through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. I rely on him on a daily basis. Each day trust him. Each day need him. Each day depend on him. Stop trying to overcome sin by your own strength. You're going to fail. Mm -hmm. But if you trust him to help you, he would release that resurrection life through you. Amen. Here's my prayer. Here's my prayer. Jesus, make me a living proof of the resurrection. That's my prayer. What's your prayer this morning? Jesus, make me a living proof of the resurrection. Jesus, there are areas of my life. Where the resurrection life is not, is not really being demonstrated. I come in submission to you. I bring those areas of my life to you. Hallelujah. I want every area of my life to reveal the reality of the resurrection power. Hallelujah. I want my life to become a living proof of the resurrection. I want to live a life of power, a life of victory, a life of holiness, a life of passion for Jesus, a life of discipline, a life of purpose, a life of impact, a life of influence. I want to become your instrument, Jesus, to bring hope to others.
I want to become your instrument to bring healing to many. I want to become your instrument to break the chains in people's lives. I want to become your instrument to help people out of destructive lifestyles and destructive mindsets and habits. I want to be a living proof of your resurrection. Right. Today, I believe the power of the resurrection is available to you. Hallelujah. I believe that you can begin to walk and live the supernatural Christian life. I believe that you can have victory over that sickness that is plaguing your body. I believe that you can have victory over that sinful habit, that, that, that addiction in your life. You can have victory over that yoke, over that thing that keeps pulling you back into who you used to be. You can have victory over it. If you will believe what Jesus accomplished on the cross. If you will believe that the resurrection power is the greatest and the highest power in all the universe. And that that same power is available to you today. The Bible says that power is already in us because we are believers. It is at work in us. Glory to God. But you see, every time we put our faith in what Jesus has accomplished, and every time we yield to the Holy Spirit, we release that power, and it goes to work in our lives. Glory to God. Can I ask you to stand to your feet right now? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I need you to pray. I need you to lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. Say, God, let my life be a living proof of your resurrection power. Come on, go ahead and pray that prayer. Pray it with all your heart. Pray it with everything in you. Cry out to the Lord. Let my life. of your grace I cry Abba Father hallowed be your name hallowed be your name hallowed be your name we cry Abba Father hallowed be your name hallowed be your name Hallowed be your name. We cry, Abba, Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Oh, we cry, Abba, Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed. Oh, we cry, Yama Father, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. Ah, we cry, Yama Father, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. Ah, we cry, Yama Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your Come on now. We cry out our Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. I want to pray for you this morning. Perhaps you may be watching online or you're here in the in the hall. And you have not yet made Jesus Lord of your life. Hear me, one of the things that the resurrection does is that it gives us hope. Because there's going to be a future resurrection. Amen. When the dead in Christ shall arise. And those who are alive, who are believers, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And to be with him eternally. 
This is your opportunity to prepare for that future resurrection. By giving your life to Christ today and becoming his child, you qualify for that future resurrection. That resurrection means that you will live with Jesus eternally. Without Jesus in your life, that resurrection will mean separation from him eternally. So is there anybody here today? Maybe you're watching online and you need to receive Jesus in your heart. I need you to put your hand on your heart and pray this prayer with me right now. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you this resurrection morning. I acknowledge that you died for me. I acknowledge that you rose for my justification. Now I open my heart to you and I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. I ask you to wash me in your precious blood and make me your child from this day. Let your resurrection power live in me in Jesus' name. Let the resurrection power change me, transform me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you right now to experience the resurrection power in your body, in your situation. The resurrection power, it can change things in your life. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this same power that raised Jesus from the dead be now released to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to bring blessings and to bring breakthroughs to your people. I want to thank you for many of them that attended this program from Friday. And today we're coming to the close of the program. I'm praying right now that they will have an experience of the supernatural power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command every sickness to die. I command every disease and affliction to leave. I command every demonic oppression to cease right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your power bring changes, bring transformations. Hallelujah. Into the lives of those who are listening and those who are watching even now. Hallelujah. Thank you for yokes of mental oppression being broken right now. Thank you for yokes of emotional affliction being broken right now. Thank you for destinies that have been changed. Thank you for lives that are being transformed radically by the resurrection power. Thank you because the resurrection today means a new beginning for each one who is part of this meeting today. And now I speak to the mountains that are standing between you and your progress. Let the resurrection power uproot those mountains. Let hindrances be moved out of your way. Let barriers be overruled. Let the resurrection power make a way for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we give you the praise. God, we give you the honor. God, we give you the worship. In the name of Jesus. Right now, we come against tumors in any part of the body. Let those tumors be rooted out. We come against cancer. We come against diabetes. We come against high blood pressure. We come against leukemia. We come against heart disease. We come against lung disease. We come against kidney disease. Let there be healing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for touching your people. We just want to give you praise. We just want to give you honor. I believe right now the power of God for deliverance is going to move. Some of you who are watching, demonic yokes are going to be broken and God is going to give you a sign. Some of you will, will be shaking under the power. Some of you might fall under the power. But the Lord is going to touch you right now. Father, I'm asking you to visit everybody who has been afflicted with demonic activity or presence in their lives. Because you rose from the dead, Satan has no more authority over your people. And you said, Behold, I give unto you power to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall my enemies have you. So right now we take authority over demonic activity. I decree and declare a generation and curses are broken. Spoken curses are revoked. Witchcraft curses are reversed. Spoken curses are neutralized. Right now, I come against demons inhabiting the mind, inhabiting the body, inhabiting the bloodline. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and I command you leave. For it is written as soon as they hear my voice.
strangers shall submit themselves unto me. You are a stranger. You have no place in that person's body. And so right now you gotta leave. You gotta leave. You gotta leave. Out you go in the name of Jesus. I decree that you come into freedom in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare every area of your life where you were chained, where you were afflicted, the Lord gives you freedom. And you begin to walk in the freedom and liberty of the sons of God from this day in Jesus' powerful name. God, we thank you for miracles that are taking place right now. Breakthroughs that are taking place right now. Blessings that are being poured out right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I prophesied that from this day, you begin to experience unending supernatural lifting in your life. I prophesy from this day, you come into unstoppable victory in your life. I prophesy from this day, you come into radical transformation. I prophesy from this day, the resurrection power ignites your spirit and you become passionate for the Lord Jesus. I prophesy from this day, the spirit of lukewarmness is taken off you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy from this day, the spirit of heaviness and depression leaves. I declare peace over you. I declare favor over you. I declare blessings over you in the name of Jesus. And I give God the praise and the honor. I give God the glory. Somebody give the Lord a shout this morning. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. What an awesome God. What a faithful God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. We're going to take our offerings. And I'm going to encourage you today as we come to the end of this program. Today I want you to give an offering that honors God. And an offering that shows that you are believing Him for great things. Praise God. Praise God. Up on the screen you're going to see various ways to give. You can do cash app. Our cash app ID is 301-326-7367 or simply Midnight Commandments. You can do Zelle. Our Zelle ID is Revival Life Church Dallas at gmail.com. You can also use our website, Revival Life Church Dallas. Look for the donate button there. Or you can write a check to Revival Life Church. Take a picture of the check. Make out the check to Revival Life Church. Use your phone, take a picture of the check and text the picture of the check to 301-326-7367. Just make sure the four edges of the check come into the picture. Okay, none of the edges are obscured. Make sure. Praise God. So that uh, when we put in your check, it will go through. Hallelujah. So do that. Let me ask uh, Reverend George to come speak a word of blessing over you. Amen. All right, let's welcome Reverend George. God be the glory. As we join, may we um, raise our uh, offerings and those of us doing giving through uh, plastic. Be sure you name your plastic the amount you want to give because plastic is just a plastic. So that when the angels come down, they will see the amount uh, you give. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praises for who you are and who we are. We thank you, Lord, for putting us in the position to give these offerings. We sow them in the blood of Jesus. Lord, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let our offerings be a testament unto the resurrection, and let the power of resurrection resurrect any and everything that the enemy has destroyed or stolen from our lives be it jobs, be it good health, be it marriage, be it advancement in our jobs, be it whatever that enemy has stolen or destroyed in our lives, let them all be resurrected through the blood of Jesus. Today that we are celebrating your resurrection, let there be resurrection in our lives of everything that enemy has destroyed or stolen. And let these our offerings be a testament and a monument unto thee. Receive it through the blood of Jesus in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. And they just say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Praise God. Let's welcome Sister Brandy. All right, I'm here to give today's announcements. Amen. So I want to thank you for being a part of today's worship service. Amen. Please do not hesitate to share your testimony. Amen. Um, if you're online, we have room for you. You can share your testimony online um, and send it via email by revival to Revival Life Church Dallas at gmail.com. Uh, at gmail, excuse me. Um, and please join us. Um, online for Bible study on Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time. It's an exciting time for us um, because we'll be digging up treasures in the Word of God. And we have a new series entitled, How to Be Led by the Spirit. How many people need to know I'm how good. to be led by the Spirit? Woo! Yes. So please join in Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. Amen. You can dial in by joining 732 434 2619 to join. Amen. Watch our television program on Monday at 11 a.m. Central Time on the ownnetwork.org. We will also love for you to recommend the television program to someone. So please share with a friend or family member that's your homework assignment for this week. Make sure you sell um, you share the television program. Amen. Um I only have two, three more announcements. So <laughs> experience powerful life-changing prayer on the Midnight Commander's prayer line. Join us Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 11 p.m. Central Time. Amen. This week, we will be taking communion and we will pray for the for the whole month of April. Just dial in to 732-434-2619. Also, listen to the five-minute prayer encounter Monday through Friday at 7 55 a.m. on KGGR 1040 a.m. or 106.9 FM and online at KGGRAM.com. You can also text 301-326-7367 on WhatsApp if you would like to receive the five-minute broadcast and then also please share it. This has blessed my life so much and my family, so please share the five-minute prayer. Uh, let's see. Encourage someone to worship with us. They can join us online, but most importantly, let them come to church. Come in, in the house. Yeah. We would love to see your smiling faces here. Mm -hmm. And join us again on the Midnight uh, Commander's Prayer Line. Yeah. And last but not least, Happy Easter to everybody. Man, thank you, Brandy. That was good. Amen. You made it exciting. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Now, I believe, God, that many of you have been touched by the power of God. We want to yes. hear your testimony. So those of you watching online, bring on those testimonies. You can send them to me uh, by text, 301-326-7367. You can send them by email, Revival Life Church Dallas at Gmail. Amen. We want to hear you. Or you can come on the prayer line tomorrow morning or tomorrow night and share your testimony. And may the Lord bless you real good Amen. in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. All right, let's all stand. Thank you for coming out. We want to thank God for all of you. Praise God. I see a, a couple of uh, uh, people. I believe the young man. Yeah, what's your name again? Remind us. Daniel. Daniel. Thank you for coming. And Mike, his birthday was during the week. Yay. Praise God. So let's stretch with our hands. We want to pray for Mike. Amen. Let's ask him, Mike, what do you want the Lord to do for you? Right. Right. Let's pray for Mike. Um, I, I need you to pray out of compassion, you know, and out of love for him. Um, Mike has a, he has great, great, great potential. Yeah. Um, but um, he's trusting God for many things in his life. And what he just said, I believe, is what he is really trusting God for. And as we pray for him, not just today, but as we keep him in our prayers, God will fulfill his expectations. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So, Mike, God has a great life for you. 
does. Okay. Um, I believe the Lord is saying, don't look at where you are and don't look at what you are going through. Yes, sir. Okay, you've been through a lot of trauma. Okay. And um, don't try to live in self-pity. Okay. What you've been through is not meant to stay with you for the rest of your life. Amen. What you've been through is meant to prepare you for where you are going. Amen. God loves you and you are precious to him. And we love you here too. Amen. Let's pray for our hands. Let's pray for life. Amen. You can get close to him and put your hand on his shoulders. Let him not just know that he is loved. Let him know that he is appreciated. Father God, we just want to pray for Mike. And we just want to ask that you will touch him in a special way. We thank you for his courage. We thank you for his resilience. We thank you for his heart. My father, heal him from all of the pain and the trauma that he's been through. Give him the expectation of his heart, O oh God. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus, that he would have peace and strength on the inside so that he can accomplish your purpose and your plan for his life. Thank you for touching him. We pray for the blessing of good health and the blessing of longevity. We decree your favor upon Mike. Let your favor distinguish him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Mike, we owe you a gift. We, we, we were supposed to come with a gift for you, actually. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a check. Amen. Amen. So that you can go enjoy yourself. Amen. Praise God. All right. Thank you for coming out today. We appreciate you. Make sure you're back here next Sunday. And may the Lord bless you real good in Jesus' name. Look up the screen, everybody. Let's pray together. Father. Thank you for renewing us in your presence and empowering us with your word. Now send us out as super conquerors to reign in life and live out the revival life. Use us to demonstrate your love and power to the hurting, the broken, the oppressed and lost. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.